Hello, Camp family. This is Stuart Cruz here, uh, wishing you a very happy holiday season. And um, I just wanted to shoot a quick video that John and I are going to go over uh, in more detail on the 2023 market outlook. But in case you're just not um, really wanting to read all of the, the data, I think I'll take you through a couple charts here and show you why we think 2023, at least the first half, is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So we're going to jump right into this real quick. <clears throat> So up here on the charts from our friends from White Charts is the two-year treasury rate. And then if I add the 10-year treasury rate, as you might expect, the 10-year is generally higher than the two-year. So the 10-year in orange is generally higher than two, meaning if you're going to give the government money and buy a bond, you're going to expect more interest from that bond over a 10-year than you will over a two-year. Now, why does that really matter? Well, right now, we're inverted. So that means the two-year treasury rate is above the 10-year. And so you're getting more rate of return for having your money with the U.S. government for only two years than you are for 10 years. And if we put up the spread, two 10-year spread, what this is is every time this blue line goes below zero, that yield curve is inverted. That's the difference between the 10-year and the two-year. So when it's a negative number, it's inverted. So why does that matter? Well, I'm going to clear up this chart a little bit, just show you the spread on here. So again, any time that this yield curve goes below this zero line, the yield curve is inverted. So if we look at U.S. recessions over the last 50-some years, you're going to notice a pattern here pretty clearly. Here's the zero line of my cursor. So here we're negative and inverted, and here we go into recession. We're inverted, we go into a recession. Not inverted, not inverted, inverted right here, a few months later, recession. Inverted right here, recession. Inverted, recession. Small inversion, small recession. Inverted. So do you think there's going to be a recession? Well, we think so. So every time that there is a um, uh, yield curve inversion, we've had a recession, but also what precedes uh, recessions are higher energy costs, check, and a tightening Fed, check. So we have all three of them. So we feel like 2023, we're going to go into a recession, earnings should come down, and that's bad for the economy. But the market, the stock market, generally bottoms out about three months before the economy bottoms out. So if we're looking for recession kind of in six to nine months, then that would mean the S&P should bottom out in maybe three. So that means we're not bottomed out yet. Okay, why is the Fed raising rates so much? Well, let's just go back to that two year. So here's the two year treasury. Okay, this is what it looks like it was low, low, low for a long time, went up, then held low, 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 and now it's rallied. The Fed funds rate, I'm going to show you that's the rate in orange. It traditionally stays below, but anytime it is below the two year, that is an inflationary force. And I'm going to, this is a max chart, so I'm just going to take this down to, let's say, three years. So for the last three years, the Fed fund rate has been below the two year, which tends to be inflationary, which is what we are trying to do. But when the, when the two year goes above the Fed funds rate, that gets to be inflationary. And when we have this gap and inflation starts picking up and rearing its head, then the Fed the reserve needs to act. And the only time in history have we been able to successfully combat inflation is when the federal funds rate was above the two-year treasury. So that's why Powell and the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates so dramatically quick because we were so far behind the curve. All this big gap indicates how far behind the curve we are. And just now we're getting to the point where we're break even. So we're not even fighting inflation yet. That's why Powell keeps raising the rates, okay? So in order to bring these rates down, he needs to go above the two-year, which again is probably going to cause a recession, okay? So what does that mean for the stock market? Well, if we look at the forward earnings, this is a chart of the S&P 500 forward earnings. And so we're looking at a 203.75. And what does that mean? Well, Two or three, that's how many dollars of earnings that the S&P, the companies in the S&P 500 are supposed to earn. Long-term average multiple is around 15 or 16. So if we apply a 16 multiple to that number, 20375 times 16, you're going to get a number in the range of 3,200 to 3,300. Okay, so that means that's kind of fair value for the S&P 500, around 3,200 to 3,300. And where are we today? 
Well, if I put a chart up there, the S&P 500 is currently at 38.22. So that's a five to 600 point decline from here. That's, you know, 15, almost 20% decline from here. Now, with inflation rates being above average, that would suggest the multiples should be even lower. Not fair value, but lower than long-term average. So maybe they're at 15 or 14. And if that's the case, we're due for another 20% decline. I don't know if that's going to happen, but the market is much more set up for a sell-off than it is for a rise. Okay, that's why we're going to maintain defensiveness. We made this call back in January of 2022. We reduced equity across the board. We missed out on 20% declines across the board. We feel like the numbers suggest there still could be another 20% in the market decline in the next, call it three to six months. So we'll be looking for those numbers watching. You're going to get a greater report on this from John and I. Uh, I think January 5th is the slated date for our webinar. But in the meantime, that's our outlook. This is why we remain defensive. Um, and I hope, in spite of this bad news, that you and your uh, family have a wonderful, happy holiday. And our theme in 2023 and throughout is going to be be better. Be better with Cam. We are having an aspirational goal to make everything better, make cruise asset management better for you. That's why we've launched this virtual family office. We want to be better every day. We want to be better than Wall Street. And we hope that you'll aspire to be better along the side with us and be better together. So that's Stuart Cruz with Cruise Asset Management and wishing you a wonderful 2023. And we're looking forward to being better together with you.